In this poignant hour, I ask you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and cruel. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard. For the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day without rest until the victory is won. The darkness will be rent by noise and flame. Men's souls will be shaken with the violences of war. For these men are lately drawn from the ways of peace. They fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They fight to liberate. They fight to let justice arise and tolerance and goodwill among all thy people. They yearn but for the end of battle, for their return to the haven of home. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into thy kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mission 15, Honor Flight of West Central Florida, flying 78 World War II veterans, two Korean veterans, and 80 of the finest guardians you will ever find in your life. I was drafted into the Army in 40, 43 years. I joined the Army Air Corps and it was 1943 and then I went in in 1944. I went in in January of 1942. Honor Flight was developed in 2005 with some private pilots coming out of Ohio taking World War II veterans to their memorial. It is developed into 142 hubs just like Honor Flight of West Central Florida all across the nation from 2006 all the way till today. We have flown over 100,000 World War II veterans, some Korean veterans and Vietnam veterans. We have a singular mission, and that is to fly them to their memorials in Washington, D.C. for free. Honor Flight of West Central Florida became an authorized hub in March of 2011 when we received our IRS exemption to be a 501c3. Since then, we have flown 15 missions and flown 1,097 World War II veterans, 10 Korean veterans, and two Vietnam veterans. Whose airplane is this? Your airplane. This airplane will not leave without you. So you can sit down until the very last and then we'll board you. We will be calling for this boarding in small groups. Guardians, I need your help. Mission 15 was unique as in Lakeland Linder Airport was the inaugural flight of an honor flight out of not only Polk County, but Lakeland, but also for the Lakeland Linear Airport. 
The uniqueness of Mission 15 is it started back in August when the Lakeland Community Foundation raised over $35,000 to make Mission 15 a reality to fly on November 12th. But that $35,000 that they gave us didn't come from companies. They came from people like you and me, and they raised it in 16 days. At 3.30 in the morning on November 12th, the volunteers started to arrive. They assembled what they had to do. We had veterans and guardians arrive at 4 o'clock in the morning. And then we went through a gourmet breakfast with uh, the McDonald's, as they always do. And then we went through the security clearances with TSA, loaded on the airplane. We flew. First, we came up the, the jetway into the airport when we landed in Baltimore. We get off the plane and my, my vet was in a wheelchair. He is mobile, but more convenient for him to get around. Uh, and to see, you know, 30 or 40 uh, full dress ar uh, armies, soldiers, sailors, airmen, welcoming these people to this process was really a chill bump moment. And, and they showed respect for the generation that preceded them, for the people that are serving today. We arrived at uh, BWI just before 9 o'clock in the morning, loaded onto the buses, and of course we take our 80 wheelchairs with us also, and then we head out to, uh, to view the memorials.
Mail call is done after we confirm the World War II veteran. And then we have a special team of ladies that call the family members, friends. We go to schools, high schools, ROTCs, and we give them a list of the last names of the veterans. And they write letters of gratitude. We put all those letters together alphabetically. And then those letters are given to the World War II veterans as a symbol of the gratitude that America has for them because that's all they had during World War II. There were no cell phones. There was only mail call and mail call is what kept them going. Um, not only sending it out, but also receiving it. It was the most important part of the day. Daniel Vega. She's running. John Underhill. John Hebel. Edmund Herring. Paul Cowrie. Arthur Schreckengaus. <laughs> Joseph Dreisler. Mail call is the singular element that they have no idea that it's coming. And most of the time, it's not the World War II veteran that's reading them. They're being read to them by their guardian because they're so emotional. It is probably the greatest thing in a small way that we can do that'll bring, that brings back what they fought for us almost 68 years ago. They called the mail call and my vet got his mail and I was watching every other vet um, receive their mail and um, the guardians would read the letters and you could see the emotion in their faces of little children just saying thank you and crying from the bottom of their heart and just being appreciative that little kids would even say thank you. My vet had very, very poor eyesight. It was, it was incumbent on me to read him some of those letters. And I will admit to you that I was bawling and squalling when I was reading those letters to those guys about, dear granddaddy, thank you for what you did. Dear dad, thank you for what you did. Dear family member. They were particularly moved by the, the letters that they received from family members because they had never been thanked and many of them had never really sh shared their stories. I mean, that was one thing that was so moving about this whole experience is for 50 years or longer, they have really not shared what happened to them during the war and, and the sacrifices that they made and the people that they had to leave on the battlefield. It was really touching and, and to see that, you know, their, their families were so grateful, really made them proud and happy and it was really very touching to see. We had almost 3,000 people assemble on a tarmac waiting for 80 World War II veterans to come back. And when that plane stopped and they started to come off and I could see their eyes again and I held them until I had bunches of them to go down that hall of honor or the walkway of honor, their eyes were still glistening and they were still ready and they still didn't know that it wasn't over. They didn't know that they were going to meet two, world, two, two star generals, get a challenge coin, get a book and then lastly they get to be with the bomber girls.
most of them in their whole life had never experienced anything like this. When they were about to step off a plane and have these thousands, literally, of people who were delighted and excited to see them, and they were going to welcome them as heroes, which they truly are. It was, it, you could not, you couldn't keep from, you know, having tears in your eyes. It was just an amazing experience, and I looked over at my veteran, I had my, put my arm around him, and he was, had a little tears in his eyes, and I tell you, it was just the kind of thing that, as you said, and others have said, it's the kind of thing you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. with the crowd that gave us a walk up on the way back and to see uh, uh, little children, four, five, six years old, sticking out their arm and wanting to shake hands. Uh, it kind of got to me. I tell you, when I go to, went in the terminal there, I, I, I really kind of had blurry eyes. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was something out of this world. When we came home in World War II, we didn't have anything. And nobody, my dad greeted me. <laughs> but anyway, that was something when I got off there and walked in and everybody was, holding up flags and and saying welcome home and all this and that, it just got to me. Welcome back. Thank you for your service. Welcome back. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome home. Thanks for your service. I was the first one off, and uh, I was just breathless. I couldn't, I couldn't speak. Uh, everybody was just screaming and and thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I never witnessed anything like that before. It, it was just breathtaking. Well, it's something that's really extra special. And um, for them to go out of their way to do this, for this one particular generation at this point, and because we are the lost generation now, and uh, there are very few left, um, it's just something that you wouldn't think of. You wouldn't think of after all these years, that, they, that the t people would just would be feel, would feel about it as they seem to do and be thankful for, for all the, the military that were there, all the people, the men and women that were fighting for this country. Well, it was a, a, a privilege, I think, to uh, see the people greeting us coming off of the airplane on our way back. It, it, it's just, you can't find the words for it. At least I, I, I have trouble trying to find the words for it. I felt welcome, felt uh, that people appreciated what we did. In fact, everybody who talked, coming through the line, just about everybody there said, thank you for your service, you know. I was thanking them for being there. <laughs> but uh, it was great. It was really great. I appreciate it, and I'm sure all of our people here appreciated it. It was an experience I couldn't, can't forget. We, uh, Walked down, and I seen a lot of people I knew were there, 
and a little kids were there with their little flags. Oh, it, it was breathtaking. I, I just, I don't know what to tell you on that. It, it, it was a, I think it was the best experience of the military I ever, ever had. And thank you so very, very much. It was just, uh, uh, I'm 87, I was just so, I've cried. And I could do it again this very moment. It's very, very important what you have done for us. I thank you very much. The whole thing uh, was one big surprise how this took place off. It was all the people that was out and the particular lines shaking hands and everything. It brought to my tears to my eyes more than once. I couldn't believe that we would be honored that greatly at this time in my life. It made me feel even doubly important. You know, never before had I felt that great. But that night, that was really something. I was queen for the day, and that's exactly how I felt. I was extremely important. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget him. Well, coming into Lakeland there, after they opened the doors to come out, and all those people out there, and the lights, and I, I couldn't believe it. Well, it made me think I went as nothing and come back as somebody. <laughs> and it was an experience I couldn't, can't forget. They still can't believe that after 68 years, people still want to praise them because they are walking legends. They don't want to be considered heroes because the heroes, the 403,000 that died in World War II, they're the heroes. They're the ones that the 15 and a half million that came back and were able to build and create the greatest nation on the face of the earth because they gave us freedom. 68 years ago, they gave us the freedom that we have today so that you and I get to do what we're doing today by telling them how great they are. Honor Flight of West Central Florida is a 501c3, a completely volunteer force. We always need donations. As I always say, I'd like you to donate today, and I'd like you to donate often. We always need volunteers because there are different stages in people's lives where they can commit. And ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, when you commit to Honor Flight, you commit from here, from your heart. If you love America and you want to do the right thing, support the honor flight because it, it represents, it stands for, for all, it stands for all the good things in our, in our country. It, it stands for volunteerism. It stands for personal commitment and dedication to our veterans. It stands for people giving to what's important, the financing the things that need to be financed. And it stands for bringing a community together because I don't think most of those people would might not even known each other, but boy, that group that was there, they were comrades just like the veterans were comrades. They, we all joined together in this wonderful um, integration uh, of all the good things about our, our experiences. And it was, it was heartwarming. I know that I will never forget this. It was on my bucket list. I find it to be such an honor and my vet will be my friend for the rest of my life. I recommend it to anyone that appreciates the service and what they did for our country to do this. Get a hold of um, the honor flight and see if you can be a part of it because it'll be a moment you'll never forget. It's just a special time and it's a blessing for the vets and they deserve it. 
I guess one thing I'd like people to know about Honor Flight is, first of all, how well organized and how much love and support that the volunteers are, are giving to our veterans to make this possible, to make this a really great day for the, the men and women that fought during World War II that deserve such a wonderful day and to go see the monuments that honor them that haven't been around that long. So I, I really think that, you know, if you can support Honor Flight, I hope that you will. The future mission of Honor Flight of West Central Florida is to continue to do the World War II veterans and also take those veterans of other wars that may be terminally ill. I would anticipate by the end of this year, we will be doing mixed flights. That is, we'll have World War II veterans, Korean veterans, and Vietnam veterans probably on the last flight of this year. And then we'll move into 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 19 and try and fly five or six times a year.